Hi, everybody. Welcome to a uh, Will Eisner Week 2021 a special event. We're here with Todd McFarlane to uh, talk about Will Eisner. Um, I'm sure I don't have to tell most of you, but for those uh, one or two people who may not know Todd's credit, Todd is the creator of Spawn, the co-creator of Venom, had uh, incredible history-making uh, stints on Spider-Man comics, and uh, as I said, Spawn, and has his toy company, McFarlane Toys, and was one of the founders of Image Comics. And uh, we're going to talk about Will Eisner with him today. So, Todd, welcome. Hey, Danny. Thanks for having me today, bud. Oh, thanks so much. So, um, so I'll, I'll just give you some kind of softball questions. And, and sure. uh, really, just um, when did you first uh, encounter Will Eisner's work? Uh, the first time it was meaningful that I, I mean, you know, I may have passed through it, never paid attention. Um, I was working at a comic book uh, shop. This would have been in the early 80s. Uh, I was going to school down in Washington uh, as part of school playing baseball. But <clears throat> on the weekends, I'd, I'd, I'd work at the comic shop. Um, as you know, at that time, direct sales were just becoming a new thing. Uh, it was just, it was literally in its infancy. Um, but there was a lot of cool books that were coming out that were outside the norm. And the norm, as you know, for most people is Marvel DC, right? Um, and, and so you, they had books that were coming out there. And two of the big magazines, I remember one was uh, ElfQuest. It was a magazine size. And then the other one was the reprints of all the spirit stuff, the black and white magazine size comic book uh and i and i you know it's obviously since i worked at the store i looked at everything and and the the spirit stuff like really pushed me back especially as an aspiring artist at that point i mean i'm years away from breaking in the comic books that it, it really caught my attention and it blew my mind that this was something that had been done decades earlier because it it felt contemporary to me, at least in terms of the presentation and the storytelling and everything else. So what made Eisner special in general and what made him special to you? I, I look at it, I, I think Will is at the top of the heap uh, in terms of storytelling, right? I mean, as I get older, Danny, I'm less enamored with pretty pictures and tons of detail and lots of line work, which I, I did plenty of. And I'm, I'm, I'm way more impressed with what people can tell a story on a page and then over a, an issue and then over a few issues. And if their artwork isn't quite as sexy as some of uh, us other, like that's not relevant to me. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I think somebody like Frank Miller is so good, it, it isn't because he draws a million lines, it, his, he just tells great stories. Will, Will did that. There was, there was, look at the goal, you know, you're an editor, the goal of looking at any page is to not be confused, right? It's that simple, right? From an artistic point of view, forget what the words are that are coming out of the mouth. You should be able to show a page to your mom and she shouldn't be confused. You might not know all the all the nuance, but she should not be confused of like where people are, where they're standing, what what it is. And and again, that's just to me part of the storytelling. Then for me, Danny, it was that he then took all of that, and then he made it sexy. I like I'm going wow. And so I have clear recollection of some of his, especially his flash pages where he was incorporating the logos into water or into piping or on brick walls. And he was using shadows and blacks. And all, it was very graphic. I mean, I, I was getting a graphic uh, degree at that point at the university. And I didn't know I was gonna break into comics. And so it was, it was visually appealing to me to look at and I can say honestly that I, I stole a couple of nuggets from him as, as I sort of progressed in my career because I just thought it was good to look at. So 
Now, one thing Will did that you certainly uh, did and the other image guys was you, you know, you, you were talented and accomplished artists and writers, but then you also, Will was a business guy too. Was that inspirational to you, the way that Will owned his characters and, and was able to actually to deal with the, the business world? Yeah, it, 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 at that same time uh, that I was going to university and, and working at the comic shop, Danny, um, I was also reading, there was another magazine that used to come out called the Comics Journal. And the Comics Journal had lengthy interviews with people in our industry. And I, I soon began to understand that there were dozens, literally dozens of people who had made a, a mark, an impact in our industry, but somehow got a bit of a short end of a stick and or at times even got pushed to the side uh, against their own against their own will. Um, and, and when I read about Will Eisner being somebody who took the business side serious, I don't know, like more or equal, but he, he, he knew that, that was a component. And he, it wasn't just, I got to do my art and I'll let everybody else sort of push me. He, to me, he stuck out as a sort of a unique combo. A high, he was a hybrid. I would argue today, if you find any kind of creative person who has a good acumen for business, that's a, that's a, weird, a, a rare person also. Um, but especially, I think, in uh, Will's time, he was a, he was a, 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 and maybe he didn't want to be a guiding light, but for a guy like me, who was built and wired that way, his actions said, wow, you can have fun, you can do comics, it can look super cool, and you don't have to get the short end of the stick. Seems like a good life. I'm going into comic books. Uh, and then when I read the other articles where the people got the short end, I just want, I'm going to veer closer to some of the stuff that Will sort of was able to accomplish and we'll see where it goes. Did you ever meet him and did you ever work with him on anything? Uh, I had, the, I had the, the great pleasure of meeting him a few times. Never got to work on him, right? Because uh, he didn't look like he needed much help on the penciling and sure didn't need any help on the inking. And he could, like, he didn't. He was a one-man show, so he didn't, he didn't need our help, right? Uh, Jack Kirby needed somebody to, to ink over him and color his stuff, so I, 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 I got to ink a couple Jack Kirby pages, but uh, no, Will, Will I just admired either from afar for the most part, but just, you know, like all of us at a convention, you know, you'd see him, and for, you know, a person like me that was trying to break in was trying to pay some attention to the history that had been there prior. I knew who the sort of the models, the gatekeepers, the, the groundskeeper were that, that, you know, maybe in modern times, they seem like, oh, those are the old men. But to me, it was like, man, without, without, those, without those people, and obviously will be in one of them, then our industry isn't where it's at today. Do you have a, do you have a favorite uh, Eisner uh, you know, comic story or graphic novel or, 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 or anything uh, that, that, that you think about or, 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 or that you advise young people to read? Um, no, I, 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 I and, and this may seem trite and, and I, I, I'll try not to make it. What, what was really staggering to me, especially as I, I was a young artist, right? I'm, I'm barely, you know, 20, um, or at least a young wannabe artist at that point, that every month that those reprints came in, that that magazine came in, I kept waiting for, like I was getting in my regular superhero books, that there were high points and low points, right? I just go, ah, you know, and part of it was because they were switching artists and whatever else. And every month I just, I, like, I, I, there'd be another surprise and another surprise and another surprise. So to me, it's like, it's like a good sitcom TV show. Uh, you, 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 you should be able to mix them all up and say, here, pick a card, any card. They can watch a show and they should like it because the, the, the quality, the value of what's in it is there. So the spirit stuff never, 
let me down for whatever it was I was looking for, Danny, in it. And and at that point, I probably couldn't even articulate it. Um, it never it never let me down. I was I was I was amazed at how long he could keep it going. I kept waiting for it. I go, no, there's got to be a point where he gets old, or he was sick, or maybe he had to go to a funeral. He had to rush a page, something. And it just kept coming page after page after page. And I was, I was jealous. I was I, I, like, it, there was, there wasn't one moment. It was the body of work. I was going, Oh my God, you can do great work for a long period of time. Wow. That's the Mount Everest of comic books. Were, were you into the graphic novels at all or mostly into the spirit? Uh, yeah, no, I read, I read, I read the graphic novels. Uh, and, I, and again, I thought, I thought they were, I thought they were super intriguing that all of a sudden he now wanted to do prose and put pictures to the prose. Uh, that that was sort of a new a new angle of looking at it. It it was it was interesting, Danny. That uh, on a couple of levels, one, it was something that wasn't sort of out there, and two. Here was a guy at that point, he was getting on the older side of his career and his life, that he wasn't willing to become a dinosaur completely, right? Of going, I do one thing, this is how I do it, and I'm going to always do it. And so I remember going, wow, it would be way easy for him to just stick to what he knows. Why, why is he pushing and changing and doing and experimenting and part of it is just the natural reason, I think, why he was who he was. And he was, I think he was always sort of going, where, where, where are the edges of any of this? And sometimes we fail. All of it's not an equal success. But I, I've always admired people that tried. And even if they failed, the, the try is way more worthy than, than never attempting in the first place. So... Uh, yeah, I thought they were interesting uh, attempts uh, at showing something new to our industry. Cool. So um, just sort of to wrap up, what, is, what would you say Eisner's legacy is? That's kind of a broad question. Yeah. And also anything about him you wanted to say that I haven't asked you? Um, I, I, for people who didn't meet Will, uh, I didn't mean him that much. I, he 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 seemed like a, a genuine, warm human being. Uh, I it, I think that matters. Um, he 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 didn't seem like he was a guy who lamented a lot uh, about about if he if things didn't go his way. He just he put in his career and he he did it with a bit of a, a smile. He's sort of like that friendly uncle that you just love and adore that they just seem like they've seen the wars and they, and they, they still have an encouraging word to say. Um, uh, art, artistically, look at, uh, I'll just go, go back to the same word, Danny. Storytelling, I think, is king in our industry. And I think when you get to, and we someday will sit and say, let's make our top 10, he to me he's like he's he's one or two he's right there at 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 the top if not the top uh and we can define another day what storytelling means because it's slightly different to each of us but in terms of telling a story engaging a reader and being consistent with it i mean all these things that matter that have value he, he's phenomenal. I mean, like his legacy is so strong because what he did, what he put on paper is not easily replicatable because of all those other factors, right? Just like everybody else, Kirby will give you the, you know, forget the drawing, the mass amount of pages he put down at, at the level he put down. All of that is hard work. I know firsthand because I have to fill blank pages with a pencil. It's, it's difficult. And to do the volume of work that they did on top of it, quality and quantity, is a staggering combination that is, that is very hard to replicate. I don't care what industry you're in, but especially in ours. Todd, this was great. Thank you so much. And uh, 
you know, this is just wonderful. You took the time and, and, and everything you said really was, was, so, uh, was so dead on uh, about Will. So thank you, stay well, and we'll see you soon. All right, thanks for giving me your time, Danny. You'd be good too. Okay, take care, Todd. All right. Bye.